Hello and welcome to lesson 2-1. Today we're going to review properties of numbers. So ultimately we're going to review the identity properties of addition and multiplication and then we're going to also look at how we can use these properties to help us solve problems. So if you recall, we have what we call the commutative properties of addition and multiplication. And what this just says is that changing the order of the numbers you are adding or multiplying doesn't change the sum or the product. So I can say 3 plus 1 is equal to 1 plus 3, and it doesn't matter which way I add those, I'm going to get the same thing. Likewise, I can say 5 times 6 is equal to 6 times 5, and again, I'll get the same answer regardless of which order I add or multiply. Likewise, when we change the grouping of the numbers, it's not going to change our answer either. That's because of the associative property of addition and multiplication. So if I have 3 times 6 times 1, and let's say I want to multiply these two numbers first, that would give me 18, and then I would go times 1. I could also, if I had 3 times 6 times 1, I could multiply these two together first to give me 3 times 6, and these will both give me 18. Likewise, if I did that with addition, if I went 3 plus 6 plus 1, I can group the 3 plus 6 to give me 9, and then add my 1 for 10, or I could group my 6 plus 1 together, which gives me six, or sorry, 3 plus 7, and that would also give me 10. So grouping of the numbers does not change for addition and multiplication. Next, we have the identity property of addition. This just says that adding 0 to a number doesn't change that number. Okay, that's why it's called an identity. So if I did 7 plus 0, I'm still going to end up with 7. So 7 did not lose its identity. The identity property of multiplication, though, um, in order to not change a number when we're multiplying, we have to multiply it by 1. So I would have something like 6 times 1. That would give me 6. Okay, And this is called the multiplicative identity. So for example 1, it wants us to use mental math to solve. Okay, so notice we have 81 plus 6 plus 9. Now because we're doing mental math, it might be actually easier to add the 81 and 9 because that's going to give us 90 and then add our 6 and our total would be 96. Okay, otherwise you're going to have 81 plus 6 which is 87 and then you're going to have to have 87 and 9 which isn't terribly hard but it's just a little bit easier when you can end um, like on a 0 or a 5 if possible. Likewise, when we go down to um, the next example where we have 6 plus 7 plus 14 it might actually be easier to group the 6 and the 14 together because that will give us 20 and then we'll add our 7 to it. So that's going to give us 27. For this next one, um, the 0 is essentially going to go away and I'm going to have 8 plus 2 which is 10 and then I end up with 10 plus a negative 7 which is really going to give me now when I come over to the next part where we have four numbers, I'm going to try to group things together that are going to work out nice for me. So 5 and 5 will give me 10, and then 12 and 18 will give me 30. So I can see real quickly then that this is going to give me 40. And finally for this last one, uh, if I take 19 and 21, I can see that I'm going to end up with 40. Then I'm going to add that negative 30, and this here is going to give me a positive 10. So we're just trying to group things together so it makes um, nice numbers for us to add mentally. For example 2, it says use mental math to find the totals. So for this one, um, with a notebook here, notice I have 35 cents, 85 cents and a dollar 65. Well me personally I would add the 35 cents to the dollar 65 because I know that that will give me two dollars and then I'm going to add my 85 cents 
So I can see that the total for all of this will be 285. Likewise, when I come over here and I look at this receipt, um, I'm looking for at the ending numbers, and I see if I add the 80 cents and the 20 cents, that's going to round up to the next dollar. So by adding a dollar 80 to 220, this here is going to give me four dollars. And if I add that then to the 230, I end up with six dollars and 30 cents. Now for example three, we're using mental math to simplify, um, but now we're doing multiplication. So personally, when I look at this, if I take and I multiply my four and my five, this is going to give me 20, and then I have to multiply not by nine. Well, two times nine is 18, and then because of that zero at the end, I know I'm gonna have 180. For my next example, we have Three times one is just going to give us three. And then a negative five times a positive eight will give me a negative 40. Well, three times a negative four is going to give me a negative 12. And again, I have to put a zero on there because of the 40. So that whole thing will then will be a negative 120. Now for the next part. I have two negatives that I'm multiplying here, so I know that my answer will be positive, but I'm gonna go two times 15 to give me 30 times eight, and then I have three times eight is 24, and I'm gonna bring down the zero, and that will be my final answer. For this next part, five times four is really 100, so I have 100 times three, or 300. And then for the last part here, again, I like to simplify negatives and positives, or at least know what my answer is going to be. So I have a negative times a negative, so my whole answer will be positive. I don't have to worry about the one because that's not going to change anything. So now I notice, and remember we said that this is positive now because of this positive. If I multiply my five and my two together, I'm gonna end up with 10. And my 9 times my 6 then will give me 54. So 10 times 54 then is going to give me an answer of 540. So these are just some suggested ways that you could do this. Um, maybe you have your own method and that's okay. Please let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, have a great day and I will see you in class.